God's so good. I was just reminded um, this morning, um, we we're, were praying in the back and just talking about miracles and healing and, um, and the importance of telling somebody. I shared that last Sunday um, when I was speaking about tithing. Of when, when something happens to you, um, something good, and you can give that testimony to somebody else, right? So God does something in your life and sharing about it because it encourages other people. It edifies God. It gives glory to God. Um, and I, I was just reminded um, about this time, uh, my family and I, I was little, I don't remember how old I was, maybe 10, 12, and we were driving to Billings, and I was super nauseous, like felt like I needed to have a puke bucket because I was just, I got so sick. And um, I remember my parents praying for me. We prayed, and I was instantly better, like instantly. It was crazy. It was the craziest thing. Like one moment, I felt like I was going to throw up. I had been sick, and then all of a sudden, I was completely fine, but I remember them um, having me when we, it was before cell phones, we got to Billings, which is where we were going, and I remember that they had me call my grandma and tell my grandma what God had done for me, because it was important that I told somebody, and I remember that, right, because I told somebody. He did something in my life, and I shared it with somebody else, and so um, it's good to tell of the things that God is doing in your life, Right? We want to give him praise and glory. If you want to grab your bulletins, um, just a couple announcements. Tuesday night, we have prayer here at the church, 7 o'clock. You're welcome to join us um, for corporate prayer on Tuesday evenings. And then youth group is Wednesday evenings. Um, if you would like to cook, they just have a couple more uh, Wednesdays left before school is out. And so if you would like to cook or bake for them, that would be awesome. Um, that starts at 530 and you cook for about 30 people. They're hungry kiddos, so make enough because they'll eat it, and, and they're grateful and thankful. Uh, summer camps, um, it's already May. It's crazy. Um, wild times. The year is just speeding on, but um, summer camps, um, they're listed there. Family camp is for all ages, um, and you can go on their website to look at pricing and stuff or talk to Pastor Tom and Teresa. They usually go every year and can tell you the ins and outs. And then we have our um, youth camps that are there as well. And so if you have somebody, it's basically third grade through a senior in high school um, are listed there. And um, if you want to invest in somebody's life, if you want to give towards that, you know, just say, here's $50 or, or I want to pay somebody's full way um, here in the community, that would be amazing. Uh, camps are, they can be life changing. It is just so neat to go into that experience and just have a week with Jesus. And um, the food is good, the games are fun, the entertainment, um, the worship is amazing. It is unlike anything um, you experience. It's just different, and it's a good thing. And so if you want to help invest into the lives of one of our youth that are wanting to go to that, um, you can do that. You can write it on the envelope or just talk to Pastor Tom and Teresa, and they will get you hooked up to help scholarship a kiddo going that way. We have Children's Church downstairs right now, so if you're three years old through fifth grade, you can head downstairs, and Pastor Tom is coming. I want to make sure the volume is up to where it needs to be for Facebook. Thank you for joining us on Facebook. It's uh, Sometimes you can't make it, and sometimes you're far away. And I know there's some kids that uh, I went to school with that are in different states, and we need some volume. And uh, they uh, are watching, so it's kind of amazing. Um, it's amazing that they're able to give me grace uh, because I wasn't always of God back then, and so um, very gracious, and they've seen how God has changed our lives, amen, amen. And, uh, and so it's amazing what God can do if we allow him to work in our lives, and, uh, and I'm a testimony of that, and so we just thank Jesus for the life-changing, um, what he wants us to be like, and the per very plans and purposes that he has for us and had for us. Uh, from the very beginning, but we have chosen to sometimes go a different direction. Today, we're going to talk about being led by the Word, and uh, I just believe that the Lord is really wanting us to hear 
what he is saying, uh, not that it wasn't important last week or the week before, but I just really sense that um, somewhat of an urgency, somewhat of a, um, this is serious type thing, you know what I mean? Uh, it, it's just amazing the things that God is showing uh, his people and leading his people into, and so uh, we are by, led by the word. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for life in you. We thank you that you've given us life. We thank you that you've redeemed us and you've pulled us out of the miry clay. Lord, whatever age that may be, Lord, we were in the miry clay. We were destined, Lord God, to uh, a place where it was distant from you. And Lord, whether it be relationship, whether it be whatever, Lord, but Father, Lord, you have redeemed us out of that dark place. You've taken us from the darkness into the light. And so we thank you, Jesus, for bringing us into that place of light. And Lord, I just ask that even as we speak today, that there would be an anointing upon your word today. And the word would go forth and it would land on good ground and and Lord, even as it's spitting rain and raining outside, Lord God, I pray that the, the word that is spoken is also watered and, and uh, brings forth fruit in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. So uh, Psalms 119, 105, we're not going to turn there. Um, I'm just going to read some really scriptures really quick. They'll be on your board. Just write them down as a reference. I got some, a lot of scriptures at the end. I just believe that the Lord just wants me to read scripture at the end. So I don't want to take up all the time just looking for things. So Psalm 119, 105 says this, being led by the word, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Today we want to address the fallacy of our confidence in ourself. In other words, our confidence in my flesh, my confidence in my soulish man. So when we start talking about um, the Word of God, the Word of God wants to work through the spirit of the man. And so when we give our life to the Lord, our spirit was in darkness, and the spirit, that um, the breath of God that comes through the Holy Spirit, because of Jesus, our spirit man is come, uh, comes alive, and we become into a relationship with Jesus Christ, with our Father, okay? So with that... We cannot do it on ourselves, and I, I, I can't say this enough, is that you're not a good enough person, you, you're not smart enough. You can't do it, because it's all by the Spirit, and it's a Spirit, we are spirit bearing, beings, and so um, we have a three-part being. We do have our flesh, we do have our mind, will, and emotions, but we also have to address and walk in the Spirit, which the Spirit will lead the soulish man, and lead the flesh. And so this is where we're headed today. So Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Lord, I just pray that people would have ears to hear today what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. We must not live on yesterday's manna. The Lord has commanded us and wants to give us fresh manna every day. Now, we can turn this into a religious act. We can uh, uh, read the Bible daily and not get a thing out of it, per se, okay? But it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of wanting to do and walking in the ways of the Lord. And I, I said this earlier in, uh, a couple weeks ago is that, you know, as a pastor, you would think, well, he reads his word every day. No, I don't read the word every day, okay? There are times when I do skip, Okay. And it's, it's not an excuse, it's not whatever, but, but the Word of God is always in me, right? And, and what I, and, uh, I was out fencing the other day and, and uh, driving my four-wheeler and, and out in the wind, and I just think, that's the wind of the Spirit. Okay, you see what I'm saying? And so, uh, religiously, I'm not reading the Bible, but I'm, I'm allowing the Word of God to be alive in my life. Uh, I'm allowing the Word of God, and here's the thing, and I said that this morning, is the Word of God will change your thinking. If you have wrong thoughts, I'm telling you what, if you have trouble with your psychological part of you, psychic, okay, read the Word of God. First of all, give your heart to the Lord so that you can start understanding this stuff, but the second thing is read the Word of God. It'll change the way you think. 
Depression comes out of wrong thinking. Depression comes out of lies. And that's the truth. It's, it's known by the world. God already says that, right? Be renewed in the thinking of your mind. Be renewed in your mind. That's what we need to do every day. Every day. Okay. Um, so the Lord wants us to have fresh manna. And he gives us an example. I love the Old Testament because in the Old Testament, it gives us ideas and examples of the Word of God. In, in fact, the manna. Do you remember the manna that came down from heaven and, it, and began to grow in the grass because of the dew, right? It would come just as dew would. And, and the Israelites would go out and they would pick it. And some Israelites thought, I'm going to outsmart God here. I'm going to pick enough manna for a couple days here, right? No, you, you don't do that. Because what happened when they, they didn't use what they didn't pick? And became what? Worms became to grow, right? You see what I'm saying? So God is saying, I have fresh manna for you every day. Don't just read 12 chapters one day and not, and not read the Bible for the next two weeks. You see what I'm saying? And it's not that the word of God is rotten, but what he's saying, I have fresh manna for you. I have a fresh word for you. Yeah. And it's important that we live by the word. We live by his words. We live by his commands. In fact, let's just go there even right now. Psalms 19. I, I spoke on this a little bit last week. Psalms 19. And it starts in verse number 7. And as you read this, I'm going to replace some of those words with the word of God. Uh, Psalms 19, verse number 7. The word of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. The word of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The words of the Lord are right, rejoicing in the heart. The word of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The word of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The words of the Lord are true, and they are righteous altogether. Those words are more desirable than gold, yes, much more than fine gold. Those words are sweeter also than honey and the dripping of the honeycomb. Moreover, by the word, okay, moreover, by the word, they warn the servant in keeping them, there is a great reward. Now, because of the, uh, I think in, in uh, English, I think in your title, you're only supposed to have so many words. Well, I wanted to add to the, the title today, and it says, we are warned by the word, therefore, let us be led by the word. That'll preach, okay? We are warned by the word, and the, and the scripture says it, we are warned by the word, so let us be led by the word. So the word of God brings forth warning at times. You know, we want all this fluff stuff. We want marshmallows and chocolate and whatever, but we have a hard time with the meat of the word. We have trouble with this, uh, discipline. We have trouble with saying, God says, no, don't do that. We have trouble with that. And God is going to talk to us today about don't do that. Do it this way. Now, we all have a choice. God is not going to slap you alongside the face, but he gives you opportunity to choose the word of God. And we choose the word of God because it's the bread of life. Yeah. It's how I sustain. It's how I live life. It's how you live life. Um, the word will cause us, the word will cause you to mature in your thinking. Now, I think of young students in school, um, getting to be high schoolers, getting to be college graduates. You got a lot going on upstairs, right? You got a lot of intellect. But I'm telling you, if you don't have and don't walk by the principles of the Word of God, you're going to be toast. You're not going to make it. I'll preach about that next week. But you can make it if you stay in the Word of God. You can make it if you make Jesus Lord of your life. Lord means that you will submit to all his ways. So we want to submit to the Lord's ways. So as we look at this, right, the, the word has substance to it. 
by faith, right? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The word is Jesus. Jesus has substance, okay? He's a spirit being, but he's also man, right? He took on flesh. He has substance. So I have faith in the substance in Jesus. I have faith in Jesus. It's substantial for me. It's like the manna. It fills me. It feeds me. The word, the word of God is like the manna. It fills me and it feeds me. Okay? Now, when we start looking at this, and I kind of addressed this a little bit as at the beginning, but John 6, 63, you can write this down. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I've spoken to you are spirit and life. Once again, if you are not born again, you cannot understand the words of these, of, on, the, on these pages. I mean, you can get some intellect in there, right? You can work through that a little bit, but you can't live without the Spirit. You cannot acknowledge these things without the Spirit of God. You need the Spirit of the Lord. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it'll change you. It'll give you direction for your life. So Jesus, when we read this word, he's not only giving us knowledge in the fact of precepts and commandments, but he's also giving us warnings that we need to, that we need to understand. And the one thing that he said in this is, is the spirit gives life and the flesh profits nothing, right? So if you rely on your flesh, if a man relies on his intellect and his thinking and his flesh, it will lead to death. There, there's just no way out of it. You, you, can't, you can't do it without the Father. You cannot do it without accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So when we look at this, um, we have to, as Christians, walk in His Word. Walk according to His Word. Let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 2. We're going to go back to there. As you're turning there, as you, as we have walked, it's been a year, been a year and a couple months since we were locked down, since we were um, given the mandate that you cannot come to church, you cannot uh, gather together. Um, there's lots of things that were mandated from um, the higher officials, we'll say it, okay? Now, during that time... <clears throat> I believe that something happened. It's almost like the lid of wickedness was opened. And, the, and that lid, when it was opened, poured out onto the earth. Now, you have to follow me all the way to the end to understand what I'm saying. But there is something that was unleashed in the demonic spirit realm that happened throughout the world. And it's still happening today. Okay? Lord help. Amen? Amen? So let's go to 2 Peter. And you're probably there. And I'll begin to read. We've been kind of reading through the chapter. Peter says, I'm an eyewitness of Jesus Christ. I'm not making this up. Um, he did miracles. He did wonders. I saw him on the cross. I saw him dead. I saw him them taking, maybe taking him to the, to the burial ground. I saw him put the stone there. I saw him ri rise again. Jesus, uh, Peter becomes an eyewitness of this Jesus who is resurrected, okay? So he's trying to convince you and I. Man, I've, I've seen all this. Peter, Paul, Paul wasn't necessarily there, but John was there. Matthew, Mark, they were there. And they're going, I saw this. I was on the Mount of Transfiguration, and I saw the Jesus that is coming in the clouds. I saw him. They were predicting the coming of Jesus Christ and what Jesus would look like. Read it in Revelations. John writes about it. Second Peter. And you, what's so funny? We think we're invincible. We think, well, that's, that was them. That was back then. That happens over there. That doesn't happen here. Liar, liar, pants on fire, okay? It happens here, and it's happening here, okay? 
don't put your eyes, don't cover your eyes, don't put your head in the sand, but understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Things are happening. Even in the last 10 years, things have happened and changed dramatically. In the last year, we've seen it almost quadruple in things happening, okay? Like I said, it's almost like the lid was pulled off and tipped over, coming out, the wickedness that's in the world. False prophets also will arise among the people, just as there will also be false teachers. Now, you and I, let's not look at false teachers and false prophets as someone standing behind a pulpit preaching. They're not always disguised that way. Okay? Anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. The Lord says there's wolves in sheep's clothing all over. Okay? So don't just think, well, I'll just watch that one, or I won't watch that one, and I've got this figured out. You're being deceived, okay? Because here it says this. There will be also false teachers among you who will do what? What happened to the word? Uh, who will be secretly, and they will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying Jesus, the master, who brought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Verse number two. And many will follow their sensuality, their own sensuality, and because of them, the way of truth will be maligned. The way of truth, the word maligned means that, that you will blaspheme the ways of the Lord. You will reject what God has commanded for you and I as individuals. I, uh, I, I wrote a letter. I, I, I commented, let, let's put it this way. I com commented on a, a bill that Marlene was kind of talking about. And it was um, the gender part of things, okay? And I commented to a senator, and the comment that came back was, it wasn't a de definite answer, but I will see to it. He said, I will see to it that no one is discriminated. How do you do that? <laughs> How do you do that? Without catering to everybody. Can't do it. There's either the man and the wife, or man and woman, let me put it that way, I'm sorry, man and woman, male and female, or there's all this other stuff. So if you cater to this, you're discriminating to this, and you're coming against the Word of God. So you can't cater to this and stand with this. You can't. And them are people that are representing you and I. Okay, they're not representing the truth of why we voted them in. Okay, we trusted that they will represent the people of Montana. Okay, so get on the horn. Okay, so these prof false prophets are going to come, and they're going to they're going to secretly try to twist the truth. If you don't know truth, you're not going to be able to understand or you will be deceived because, oh, that sounds really, really good. That sounds awesome. You're not going to discriminate any, against anybody? That's awesome. You can't do it. <laughs> the truth is you can't do it. Yeah. And parents, I, I just, I, I can't say enough. And as an individual, as parents, as grandparents, you need to know what your child is learning in school. Oh. I'm telling you, there's things that are coming down the pike and are in the pike <laughs> and, and is being presented to your children right now as you speak in Glasgow, Montana. Yeah. You best know what they're telling your child. The best, and I'm getting a little bit far ahead of myself. I'm not blaming anybody. It's the spirit of the world. Yeah. Okay, It's the spirit of the world. And I'll, I'll address that in just a second. So they acted corruptly toward him, and they are not, they are not children. In due time, in uh, Deuteronomy, it says this. When, when Jesus talks about, 
when he talks about not following the commandments of the Lord or not following the word of the Lord, these are some things that are going to happen. And, and he speaks through Moses, and Moses speaks it to the children of Israel. The children of Israel are us, right? An example of us as Christians. And here's the warning again, right? So here's what, here's what Moses speaks out in Deuteronomy 32. You can write that down and look it up. They acted corruptly towards God. They are not his children. In due time, their foot will slip, for the day of their calamity is near. Now, we're not talking about an unsaved person. We're talking about a person, right, that was a child of God that followed Moses through the Red Sea to be delivered out of bondage and was delivered out of bondage, but choose not to believe in God, choose, chose not to believe in our Savior, Jesus Christ, okay, and their foot slipped. Yep. And calamity came upon them. Yep. So you and I, here's the warning, don't get cocky in your flesh. No. Don't think that you got this. Most of us are, some of us in here are over 50, and that would be like the downhill slope if you want to call it that way but anyway we think we've got it right and us young people right we use our strength and we go I got this and guess what you don't got it unless you got Jesus you need Jesus you need the truth of his word in your life so when we start talking about Jesus, he makes this appeal to every mankind, all mankind. He says, believe in me. Believe in me, he says it lots of times. He says the word believe a lot of times. He says, believe in me a couple of times. But, he, but he's saying believe. You need to believe, okay? So one of the things that happens in our Christian walk, and, and we prayed even this morning, it was funny how that came up in prayer in the back here, is that God wants to demonstrate himself through the manifestation of miracles. As believers, as Christians, as the, as the people went through the Red Sea, that miracle should have been enough to prove that God is God. So the trouble with you and me as Christians relying on another miracle is not good. Because what happens is our umbilical cord, if you want to call it that, our lifeline becomes the miracle. And so what happens is when the miracle doesn't come through, we start whining, grumbling, complaining, and saying, God, prove yourself. Have we not done that? Yeah. Prove yourself. God, if you're good, prove yourself. And we do it in an almost an arrogant, testing way. God is God. You're sitting here today because of God and the goodness of God. He doesn't have to prove a thing. His, his word is already proven. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right? Amen. So you and I, we believe. I believe in Jesus. Amen. I believe in the Father. I believe. Yeah. Not, not necessarily the miracles. Now, God, does God want to do miracles? Absolutely. Yeah. Miracles are a sign. But we're not looking for a sign to find Jesus as Christians, okay? Jesus did many miracles, and those many miracles brought people into the kingdom. But we find ourselves, we find ourselves looking for the miracle rather than, and you have to be careful. So, so when I say that, even as we pray this morning, God, 
let there be miracles, signs, and wonders happening in our midst. What happens is, is that as a Christian, as we're sitting here, and we go through something that's maybe difficult, we flip out and freak out and do all kinds of weird things, and people look at you and go, dude, what is wrong with you? I thought Jesus was your rock. I thought Jesus was the, the house or, or the rock that you built your house on. You're not, you're not showing that to me. You're just like us. You're like crumbling. Because what happened is your, your confidence becomes in this. God, just do another thing for me. He's already done enough. He sent his son, Jesus. That's all. I mean, he fulfilled everything. Jesus fulfilled everything. So my thirsting and my hungering is for him. I would venture to say this. We all need encouragement. And we find encouragement through one another. And Amber stated this. If, if something fabulous happens, a miracle happens in your, in your life, share it. Because I believe miracles encourage us, right? They encourage us. But we're not looking to Jesus just for the miracle. We're looking to Jesus. And miracles will come. I'd venture to say this, that When you're looking for a miracle, you're looking for a sensual fulfillment. You're looking for something to please your flesh or maybe take care of your emotions, whatever it may be. Rather than being solid in him. If you can't believe him here, you will not believe him over here. Jesus says, believe me for who I am. Gra ungrateful person. Ever, anybody ever been around an ungrateful person? Anybody ever been that ungrateful person? Okay. Ungrateful. I mean, just absolutely ungrateful. If a miracle fell in their lap, they'd still be ungrateful. So when a sign comes, they still won't believe. I mean, it's that attitude that we have. If you're ungrateful, you won't be grateful in this, even if it fell in your lap. Even if God changed the circumstances, you'd still be ungrateful. A change of heart is what we need. A change of heart, change of attitude, change of thinking. The Word of God will change that for you. We must be careful not to bring, wanting God to bring us gratification, to make us feel good, to make us think in a sense that God loves us because he's already, he already loves us. First John, he, he loves us. He sent his son for God so loved you that Jesus gave his life for you. That's God's love. So we, we must be careful and we must mature in the process of tribulation, suffering, and those type of things and not be ready to bail, not be ready to give up, not be because God is faithful. Right. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I'm walking through it. He doesn't pluck you right out of it, but you're walking through it. We have to walk through some things. Because God wants you to be mature and grow. He wants you to be mature and grow. I'm going to read a, a verse, and it's, uh, King, uh, it's out of the King James. It's John 6, 36. So just maybe not even put that up on the screen, uh, unless you have the King James Version. 
And it says this, uh, John 6, 26. Let's be careful that we don't grumble and complain and test God because of our unbelief. 26 goes like this, very, very, Jesus had just fed the 5,000. He fed the 5,000, he goes across the lake and a, a whole bunch of them follow him. And he perceives, he discerns what's going on in, in their heart and he states it in verse 26. Verily, verily, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. In other words, he's saying, you're only following me because I'm feeding you physical food. You're not following me because of who I am. You're following me for gratification. And, and, and the writer in the commentary writes this, and it's, it's interesting how he writes it. The miracles we experienced should lead us to acknowledge Jesus as the Messiah. The miracles we experience should lead us to acknowledge Jesus as the Messiah. But instead, we are led by our sensuality, our sensual appetite, similar to beasts of the field, driven by the impulse of want and supply. We're like animals. All I want is gratification. And, it, and you can just even look if you have your Bible open, and it talks a little bit about that um, in verse 12, 2 Peter 2, 12. We won't even go there, but it talks about that very thing. That we're like beasts just trying to gratify our pleasure. That's why there's so much sexual prom prom promiscuality, pornography. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's like at the top of the chart. Even amongst us, in a survey, over 50% are involved in pornography. 30% are women. 50 or more are men. God warns us. Don't do that. The Word of God says, don't do that. Now, is there help? Yeah, yeah there is help. The grace of God gives you the power the Word of God gives you the power to think differently. There's power in the Word of God. And that power comes through the Holy Spirit who resurrected Jesus from the dead. Holy Spirit. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need Him to deliver you out of, you know, and Jesus has already broken the chains. But His grace, the power of the Holy Spirit will help you walk out of it. Chains are already loosed. If you're a Christian, they're, they're loosed. You're just staying in it. The power of the Holy Spirit will walk you out of that. <clears throat> Let's read uh, 2 Peter 2, verse number 9. Actually 2, I'm going to start in 2. And many will follow their sensuality... And because of them, the ways of truth will be maligned. And in their greed, they will exploit you. You will fall. You will feel it. I should not comment every, because I lose my place. <laughs> and in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle and their destruction is not asleep. Same thing that was happening back in the Israelites' time when they came out is happening now. It has not fell asleep. It's still there. For if God did not spare angels when, this, when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to pits of darkness reserved for judgment, and they did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a preacher of righteousness, with seven others, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. How many do you expect, would say, was in the land at the time of Noah? I don't know this answer, but you can figure it, make a number. Could be million, could be 500,000, could be 6 million, could be whatever. Right? It says, 
all of them were ungodly. How can that be? But they were. How many did Jesus save? Or God save? Seven. Eight with Noah. All of them perished. So, so to think that I can do all this stuff and still get in my, the skin of my teeth, you're being deceived. You're believing a lie. Yes, there's the blood of Jesus. Yes, there's grace. Yes, there's mercy. But there's a point in this walk that you have to walk and you have to make choices according to the word of God. Otherwise, you will slip and fall. Jesus is warning us. The word is warning us. Here's a warning. We, we, see, we see the wickedness being poured out. We see it. We experience it. And yet we're just going around like, la-di-da, not going to get me. It will. Honestly, it will get you. If you don't follow the commands of the Lord. So what the Lord is saying, quit peddling in stuff that's not right. Quit playing with witchcraft. Quit playing with those things which are demonic. Thinking that you can overcome it. Thinking that you can quit at any time. You can't. Unless you repent and walk in the grace of God. We always think of the prodigal son. And, and yes, the prodigal son came back. He did come back. He came back. But there's several scriptures that say, once you've departed, you can't come back. <laughs> it's your heart. What's your heart like? Is your heart hardened towards the things of God? Are, 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 you, are you willing to uh, call Jesus Lord of your life? Are you willing to forsake this for him? I love the part where he says, if you can't lay down your life, if you can't hate mother, brother, sister, then you can't serve me. And he's not asking you to do that in a, in a sense, but he's asking you to do that. It's not that you don't love your mother. It doesn't mean that you don't love your father. But if you're going to cater to that, you will have no part of the kingdom. Yeah. Do we pray? Absolutely. We're back there, we're praying even this morning. We all have loved ones. We all have friends. We all have relationships. We have sons, daughters, husbands, wives, whatever it may be that don't know the Lord. So we continue to earnestly pray. God, open their eyes. God, let them see. Let them hear truth. Let them hear the truth. And, and I love this part. Peter, how did you know? How did you know that I was a son of God? Jesus says this. How did you know that I was a son of God? The Father revealed it to him. Can't do anything without the Father. Yeah. Can't do anything without Jesus. You see what I'm saying? It's back to that whole flesh mind thing that I got this. I can come back to the kingdom whenever I want to. You can't. Now Jesus is drawing you. You see the fallacy? You see the lies that you're believing? I'll, I'll just, when on my deathbed, I'll just ask Jesus into my life, all be well. There's been millions of people that have given their life on their deathbed. Millions. The 11th hour, God gave them eternity. But there are many that were trying to breathe their last breath and never said yes to him. Remember that. So we want to, pray, as we pray, we want them to receive Jesus now. While the grace of God is being poured out, the harvest is ripe. It's ready. We want them to receive Jesus now. How far did I get? I don't remember. Here we are. Let's go here. He did not spare any of the ungodly. In verse number six, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction by reducing them to ashes, having made them an example to those who would live ungodly thereafter, if he rescued righteous Lot 
oppressed by the sensual conduct of unprincipled men. For by what he saw and heard that righteous man, while living among them, felt his righteous soul tormented day after day with their lawless deeds. I'm going, Lot, why did you stay there? Because his family was there. He was trying to turn people, okay? Verse number nine, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from temptation and to keep the un unrighteous under punishment for the day of judgment. I want us to turn to 1 Corinthians, and this will be my last scripture. Peter writes about it. Paul's writing about it. Inspired by the Holy Spirit as they penned on paper. 1 Corinthians 10, and I'm, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 13. So just kind of concentrate your heart on the words. For I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that our fathers who were under the cloud all passed through the sea. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. That word baptism means they were followers of Moses. Moses is a type of Christ. Moses took people because of God, because of God's favor. Moses took people out of bondage of slavery into the promised land. That's what Christ did for us. He took us out of slavery and bondage into the promised land. So Moses, they were baptized into Moses in that sense. Verse number three, and all ate the same spiritual food. Everyone had the same opportunity. All tasted the goodness of God. Verse number four, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them. The rock was Christ Jesus. You, you think about this. Christ was revealed in the Old Testament. Amen. He was revealed. Abraham maybe didn't see him, but he believed in him. Mm -hmm. Noah didn't see him, but he believed in him. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's the rock. He's the rock. When Moses struck the rock, water came out of it. Yes. God wants to water, right? He wants to water you. He wants to bring you life through the rock, through Jesus. <clears throat> Now these things, verse number six, now these things, number, verse number five, nevertheless, with most of them, God was not well pleased, for they were laid low in the wilderness. Verse number six, now these things happened as an example for us. These are examples that we should not crave evil things as they also craved evil things. And do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and stood up to play. Nor let us act immorally as some of them did. 23,000 fell on one day. Nor let us try the Lord as some of them did and were destroyed by the serpents. Nor should we grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened for our example and they were written for our instruction. I want you to say this, instruction, instruction. They were written for our instruction upon whom the ends of the age have come. Verse number 12, therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Talking right into the person that thinks he's somebody and he's not without Christ Jesus. You're on sinking sand if you don't have Christ. You're on sinking sand if, you're, if the word is not part of your life. <clears throat> Verse number 13. No temptation has overtaken you, but such is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with temptation will provide the way of escape also that you may be able to endure it. That means you're going to walk through this. Yeah. 
That, that means you can walk through this. That means that there's going to be temptations. That means that you can overcome the temptations. That means you, you're not going to fall if you put your hand in his hand. If you abide by his word, if you stay in his word, you won't fall. The Lord has provided a way through Jesus Christ. And we step into that today. Let's pray. Father, today we just thank you for the word of God. We thank you for life in you. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us life through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the repentance of God leads us to you. The kindness of God leads us to repentance. God, you are kind, you are generous, long-suffering, patient, and you're not willing that any should perish. And Lord, if there's anyone here that's playing the game, that's come along for the ride, and they're blinded, their heart is not right towards you, I pray that they would make their heart right with you today. God is giving opportunity even today that your life would turn around and come towards him. And Lord, I thank you for that opportunity today to accept you as Lord and Savior, to walk in truth, to walk in light, the way that you designed from the very beginning to have a relationship with you and to be able to spend eternity with our creator, the Father, the King of kings and Lord of lords. We love you and praise you, Lord, for your goodness and your greatness. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, everybody said, amen. Amen. amen.